and the Thurman uses emotional Thanksgiving post to suggest she has been a victim of Harvey Weinstein and his wicked conspirators and says he doesn't even deserve a bullet. Emma Thurman posted a notice on her Instagram account Thursday hinting that she was allegedly victimized by movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. I am grateful today to be alive for all those I love and for all those who have the courage to stand up for others, the Pulp Fiction star wrote. I said I was angry recently and I have a few reasons, sharp may too, in case you couldn't tell by the look on my face. I feel it's important to take your time, be fair, be exact, so, happy Thanksgiving everyone. Except you Harvey and all your wicked conspirators, I'm glad it's going slowly. You don't deserve a bullet, stay tuned. The post was attached with a still photograph of Thurman in Kill Bill. Volume 2, a film distributed by Miramax. The scene depicted in the photograph is one where Thurman's character, Beatrix Kiddo, vows to go on a rampage of revenge. Weinstein was executive producer of the Kill Bill sequel. Both Volume 1 and Volume 2 are distributed by Miramax. Miramax was founded by Weinstein and his brother, Bob Weinstein. The brothers left Miramax shortly after they sold the firm to the Walt Disney Company. They then went on to found the Weinstein Company. Weinstein, the founder of Miramax and the Weinstein Company, has been accused by scores of women of sexual misconduct ranging from harassment to rape. The Sharp Matal hashtag is a reference to the viral campaign in which women on social media recount their experiences of being victimized by sexual harassers. This is not the first time Thurman has suggested that she, too, was one of Weinstein's alleged victims. Last month, Thurman gave an emotional interview to Access Hollywood in which she stopped short of making any accusations. The Kill Bill star spoke with Access Hollywood about the scandals during the October 18th screening for her new film The Parisian Woman. Asked what she thought about women in show business speaking out against inappropriate behavior in the workplace, Emma said, I think it's commendable. Though the Boston native appeared calm, her frustration was palpable as she took a deep breath and told the NBC show, I don't have a tidy soundbite for you. She chose her words carefully as she continued, I have learned I am not a child and I have learned that when I've spoken in anger I usually regret the way I express myself. The 5 foot 11 beauty said, I've been waiting to feel less angry, adding, when I'm ready, I'll say what I have to say. The statuesque stunner worked with Weinstein and his Miramax production company six times in her career. Their collaboration began with the 1994 film noir Pulp Fiction, a cult hit produced by Quentin Tarantino and distributed by Miramax. The next year, Thurman starred in A Month by the Lake, alongside Vanessa Redgrave. In 1996, Thurman was part of an ensemble cast that included David Uckett, Lauren Holly, Matt Dillon, Myra Sorvino, Natalie Portman, and Rosie O'Donnell, all of whom starred in the romantic drama Beautiful Girls. Ironically, Sorvino and Holly would later become two of the dozens of women who came forward with accusations against Weinstein. In 2000, Miramax distributed another film starring Thurman, Vatil. The tall, blonde talent soft collaborator Tarantino also opened up about Weinstein's behavior in October, admitting, I knew enough to do more than I did. The director said that, that he first learned about the Hollywood power player's habit for harassment when his then-girlfriend Sorvino told him she had an incident with Harvey. There was more to it than just the normal rumors, the normal gossip. It wasn't second-hand. I knew he did a couple of these things. What I did was marginalize the incidents, Tarantino told the New York Times. Anything I say now will sound like a crappy excuse, added the filmmaker, who won Best Screenplay Oscars for black comedy western Django Unchained in 2013 and Pulp Fiction in 1995. Weinstein and Tarantino have worked closely for decades since the producer distributed Reservoir Dogs in 1992.
The pair also collaborated on Pulp Fiction, the Kill Bill films, Inglorious Bastards, and The Hateful Eight. The Pulp Fiction director first broke his silence on the scandal on October 13, issuing a statement through the actress Amber Tamblin. Tamblin, a close friend to Tarantino, posted the message on her Twitter account after the two had a long dinner. The statement read, For the last week I've been stunned and heartbroken about the revelations that have come to light about my friend for 25 years Harvey Weinstein. I need a few more days to process my pain, emotions, anger and memory and then I will speak about it. Weinstein and recently threw the director a party to celebrate his engagement to Israeli singer Daniel Pick, 33. Dozens of women, 93 by one count, have accused the Oscar-winning producer of offences ranging from sexual harassment to rape dating back to the 1980s. On October 5, the New York Times published a bombshell report indicating that Weinstein paid at least eight women money to settle sexual harassment claims that spanned decades. The Times story quoted a number of prominent women in Hollywood, among them Ashley Judd and Rose McGowan. The women alleged that Weinstein forced them to massage him and see him naked in exchange for help in advancing their careers. On October 10, The New Yorker magazine published a story that contained allegations from 13 more women, three of whom said that Weinstein raped them. The Times and New Yorker reports opened the floodgates, motivating dozens of other women to come forward with their own accusations against Weinstein. The once exalted movie executive has since been fired from the Weinstein Company. He is now the subject of criminal investigations in numerous jurisdictions. Earlier this week, The New Yorker came out with another report about six- and seven-figure payouts from Weinstein to his accusers. These payments span the course of 20 years, with the most recent being the $1 million Harvey paid to model Amber Battle and in 2015 after she accused him of groping her in his office and managed to record him as he begged her to join him in a hotel room. In exchange for that money, Batilina agreed to delete that recording and hand over the passwords to all her email accounts and her electronic devices while also signing a non-disclosure agreement. That was not the case for Rose McGowan, who after receiving a $100,000 settlement in 1997 following her alleged rape by the executive signed a contract that said she would not sue Harvey but included no ender. One year later, a sexual assault allegation brought against Harvey by two of his assistants resulted in his brother Bob paying out £250,000 from his personal bank account, the equivalent of $600,000 today. And yet when news of his brother's decades of assault broke, Bob said he was shocked and dismayed by the allegations 